All right, let's go ahead and move on to testing. I alluded a little bit of this in our A block, but the current Biden administration plan for distributing rapid tests, which they promised at the height of the Omicron wave, is a complete and total joke. So let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. So starting tomorrow, January 19th, Americans will be or able to order their tests online at covidtest.gov. Oh, that's great. However, tests will typically ship between seven to 12 days of ordering. God. There are a limited number of tests that you can even get. So with a slow turnaround time, you can order four free at-home tests. You may not be able to get more in the future. The U.S. has not actually secured the supply of that crystal in terms of the future ones, and we're still working on different vendors. You can wait seven to 12 days to get to a test while the Omicron wave continues to abate. So do I have that right? I mean, what a complete testament. By the time you to, can actually get a test, Omicron will be over. You will be <laughs> fine. Yeah, you will have nothing. And what really annoys me even more is that beyond the free at-home COVID test, I alluded to this earlier, Americans will be allowed under the Biden plan to have their insurance cover up to eight COVID tests per month. However, those COVID tests have to be approved by your insurance company. You can't just grab any old uh, COVID test off the shelf. It has to be one which is in network. And then if it is out of network, they'll reimburse you up to $25 and you have to do paperwork. Once again, you lost me. Nobody's going to do that. It's the most convoluted BS system in the world. Everywhere else just gives you a freaking test. They just or send them out. They either send them out or they have them widely available at pharmacies for a dollar. In Germany, for example, you can just go and there's no worries about shortage. You just go in. You're like, hey, dollar. Here's five tests. That's it. I was telling you this. My dad just got back from India. I am having him bring me home tests from there because they don't have the same FDA regulation. You could buy as many as you want and just put them in a suitcase. What kind of failed country is this? They have a billion point five people over there. So sad. And we have 300 million. Really sad. It's complete. It's I like I don't even know how to describe it. It's a failure of the regulatory state, of the uh, of the administrative state, of the White House, of vision, the entire country. The only good news we have is that Omicron does seem to be abating, especially in some of the hotspots. So let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen, which is that you can see that this is a graph of cases per day in New York City. New York City very much was the beginning kind of the Omicron wave. You can see that there has been a pretty dramatic dip in the seven-day average. So 90% of sequence cases for Omicron began there right in the middle of December. And now, after about a couple of weeks, it be begins to go down. I shouldn't say that it's going to be gone. That was obviously in New York, so it still has to burn through the rest of the country. But at this point, the facts are clear. You probably will get Omicron or be exposed to it in some way. This is very likely to be milder. We know this, too, from analysis of the data. Let's put it up there on the screen. David Leonhardt and his review of the evidence, very clear that Omicron is milder in terms of its severity, both in terms of how it impacts you and in terms of hospitalizations and death. I can tell you this. I know multiple people, including my own mother, who got Omicron um, and others. Uh, they did not suffer even close to the same amount of symptoms that I did, despite the fact that I was vaccinated <laughs> got and got Delta. Yeah, I know. I, I'm like so SOL. I'm like the you know one of those people who got Delta post-vaccination. But <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I like to think that I have decent antibodies. So the testing regime is a complete and total joke, Crystal. However, uh, the good news is, is that the cases seem to be getting better. Yeah. So and, and it's actually not just in New York City. Yeah. Um, they say recent data also shows a downward trend in other northeastern states, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Those are all really encouraging signs. And that is the trend that we saw around the world, mm -hmm. too. Huge spike and then pretty precipitous fall off. So fingers crossed that we're headed in the same direction there. And it's not just the new case numbers. Also, the test positivity rates are down as well. New York Governor Kathy Hochul gave a press conference saying, you know, it looks like the clouds are parting a bit. Um, obviously, fingers crossed that those trends continue and we don't get another ter terrible variant to have to deal with. On what we know now about Omicron, basically our hopes you know, that it were would be milder, it has come to fruition. Yes. And not only are you much less likely to go to the hospital with Omicron, but even those, and this is what David Leanhart was tracking, even those people who do need hospital care, their symptoms are milder on average than people who were hospitalized in previous waves. So you're less likely to go to the hospital with Omicron. If you do end up in the hospital, you are more likely to have milder symptoms than previous hospitalization waves. 
and we haven't seen a big spike in deaths. Now, that's a trailing uh, indicator, so it's possible that you see deaths jump up here, you know, as we as we move through time. But so far, that hasn't been uh -huh. what has happened, and that is really, you know, that's really important. I mean, I do want to say I think it's really important. Uh, the hospital staff being stressed and the hospitals being overwhelmed in these places, that's a real thing, and it is a real problem, especially when you have a lot of healthcare staff that have quit or retired over the last year, so they already had limited staffing capacity. And then even if you have someone who is coming in with Omicron, not because of o Omicron, you still have to go through special procedures because they're infectious and you have to, you know, it takes additional resources both from a, a space uh, perspective and from a, a staffing perspective. So those are real burdens being put on the hospitals, but there is good news here that could indicate that we are on sort of the, you know, the downward slope significantly of the Omicron wave. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think that I really am focusing on where the future is. My monologue is going to be about school masking and about the future politics and the wars over that. But as we begin to look at this, a wide availability of tests, even with the annoying regime now put into place by the U.S. government in terms of four tests and more, the massive amount of natural immunity that has now been accrued by the population, both in terms of vax immunity and in terms of uh, antibodies that people get from being infected with the virus, on top of the people who are elderly immunocompromised who absolutely did need the booster shot and it does seem that that has kept them very much out so out of the hospital I saw some recent data that boosters amongst people who are age 65 reduced their hospitalization rate to the same level as the general generic hospitalization rate for normal covid of 12 to 25 year old people that's great fantastic news so if you're old or you have a BMI that makes you obese um, that's definitely something that you should consider that thing is, and you know, we continue to look is, you put all that together, the off ramp is here. And it's been here now for a while. Omicron is what brought back a lot of the restrictions, but they really don't have a lot of excuses at this point. You're right about the strained hospitals. However, we still don't see so the return of triage care that we saw in New York City at the height of the wave. Yeah. We don't mm -hmm. see you know, uh, the ICU beds or whatever at 100% uh, capacity. And another thing I want to note here, because not enough people tell you this, you know, ICUs normally run at 60, 65% capacity. I had no idea about that. So when I hear ICUs are 75%, well, if you don't know the baseline, then you don't really know what that actually means. Um, so when they're saying strain, yeah, it's like 10, 15, 20% more, not downplaying it um, for the people who are in the hospitals. But ICUs are actually built in order to be occupied. It makes sense because it's super expensive and you shouldn't have nobody in the beds anyway. So really what I would say is off-ramp is here. The tests are now available. You can live your life. Um, we have a very good preview of what the future will probably look like. And if you look at the 1918 flu pandemic, this is exactly what happened. I didn't know this either. I've been recently doing some research, which is that the part of the seasonal influenza that we have now, the little remnants of that are from the 1918 flu. What oh, happened is, is that the flu came, it was extremely virulent, um, you know, had two waves in which it killed a lot of people. And then just basically, just like Omicron, um, in order to become more infectious, becomes less deadly. And then parts of that virus will simply just float around. So the thesis around coronavirus is that currently the common cold is nine different rhino or coronaviruses, is that this will, COVID-19 will become a part of what we all collectively know as the seasonal flu within, I don't know, a couple of years. Pro maybe by next year, hopefully. Uh, this is the last winter that we have to do this thing. Indeed. Right. So anyway, a little bit of good news there, even yeah. as the administration. I'm going to cover this in my mono monologue, but Kamala in her interview telling oh, right. people, if you're having trouble finding a test, just Google it, guys. Yeah, Google it. Take some personal responsibility. Google harder, then I'm sure you can find a test. I went to 12 different stores or called, yeah. went to or called 12 different stores. They had nothing. You had to like stake out a Walmart at 2 a.m. for mm -hmm. when the truck drove. Yeah. Arrived, so thank you, Madam Vice President, for that helpful piece of advice. Thank you, ma'am. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.